good morning everyone and welcome to my presentation as you can see on the screen our topic is yes let me start by saying a few words about the topic post translational protein modifications ptpm before going to the topic we can remain what is translation we know this process there are mainly three processes that happen in your genetic dna molecules dna replication translation transcription replication is duplication of parental dna to daughter dnas and transcription is the formation of daughter rna from the parental dnas and last one translation is the formation of polypeptide chains or proteins from the rna molecules here is post translational modification that is after the translation the protein molecule that formed was not fully functional it need many changes that is modifications this is known as post translational protein modifications so we can come to the topic detail to become a mature functional protein it has to undergo many structural modifications functional maturations and chemical processing this may be called as the post translational modifications of proteins this process is essential in a formation of complete protein it involve many covalent binding and enzymatic modifications of inactive nascent protein mainly the ptpm that include two modifications that is primary modifications and the secondary modifications first one is primary modification primary modifications mainly are structural modifications they include protein folding and proteolytic cleavage and second one is the secondary modifications secondary modifications are mainly chemical modifications it include covalent incorporation of chemical groups at the n terminal and c terminal of the amino acid residues such as alanine glycine leucine isoleucine methionine valine etc etc so it include the chemical modifications that include many processes glycosylation methylation acetylation alkylation phosphorylation hydroxylation etc these are the common methods of chemical modifications these modifications may be takes place even during the peptide chain elongation also be after the translation termination in some cases several polypeptide get assembled form a complex functional protein yes first we can see what first one the primary modifications including first one is protein folding yes what is protein folding protein folding is a characteristic folding of nascent linear polypeptide chain to attain a unique secondary or tertiary that is three dimensional native structure of a functional protein molecules it involves many interactions of amino acid residue of a peptide chain this process that is mediated by some catalytic proteins that is known as chaperons so what is chaperons chaperons are specialized protein that enable individual polypeptide chains to a precisely folding into a final thermodynamically functional configuration there are many role to the chaperons such as rolling character and folding and spatial assembling of polypeptide chains to form a three dimensional tertiary structure of a functional protein at the same time there are not themselves part of a functional complex of proteins they do not directly provide three dimensional structure of proteins they simply bind to the nascent polypeptide chains and allow them to fold only in the correct direction and preventing their misfoldings 
and taprons also involved in the insertion of intrinsic protein into the lipid bilayer of biological membranes the transmembrane transport of protein the correct refolding of denatured proteins etc so we know that taprons are a catalytic molecule protein this catalytic activity of taprons is energy dependent and so it involves atp hydrolysis so this is all about the primary modification protein folding next one is proteolytic cleavage protein cleavage or also known as proteolysis it is a degradation of polypeptide chain by the breakdown of peptide bonds we know that what is peptide bonds the bond between the protein molecules in post translation modifications of protein the proteal cleavage that include four main events namely cleaving out of methionin removal of signal peptides trimming of terminal amino acids and final the removal of internal peptides this is also it is this mainly associated with the activation of inactive precursor proteins so we can see each event events detailedly first one was cleaving out of methionine what is methionine methionine is a first incorporated amino acids of a polypeptide chain once the amino terminal of the glowing peptide chain is established the initial methionine is often removed from the amino terminal this is the cleaving out of methionine next the removal of signal peptides signal peptides is a linear series of amino acids at the end terminal of the nascent polypeptide chain during the post translation modifications it is cleaved out by the enzyme signal peptidase which is present in the er that is endoplasmic reticulum then the processed peptide chain is released for packaging in golgi bodies and lysosomes sometimes polypeptides may be subjected to a process of breakage and making of covalent bonds this is catalyzed by the enzyme disulfide isomerase and peptidyl propyl isomerase this is all about the protein cleavage so we see the first process that is primary modification it include mainly two first one is protein folding and the protein cleavage and in the protein cleavage there are four mainly event and we see in detail and the enzymes involved in this process after the primary modifications we can go through the secondary modification or otherwise chemical modifications the chemical modifications is accomplished by several chemical processing methods glycosylation protein methylation etc etc so first we can see what is glycosylation protein glycosylation is the incorporation of mostly oligosaccharides that are glycan to polypeptide chain and this is catalyzed by the enzyme glycosylase it's a major process of post translation protein modifications because it has significant effects on folding molecular conformation stability and functional activity of proteins even then only very few proteins are glycosylated then we can see what is happening in the glycosylation to the protein molecule in glycosylation a glycan that is a oligosaccharide is added either to the nitrogen atom or to an oxygen atom these are two kinds so that is n linked and o linked the former that is n linked usually occurs at the amide nitrogen of paragen while the later occurs on the oxygen atom of serine or threonine serine and threonines are amino acid molecule 
the n-linked or o-linked oligosaccharides have a significant role in protein sorting immune recognition receptor binding inflammations and pathogenicity there is an example that is n-linked glycans of immune cell that dictate how the cell has to migrate to the specific sites and how it can recognize the self and the non-cells next one is protein methylation it is the addition of methyl group usually to the lysine or arginine residues of peptide chain it is catalyzed by the enzyme methyl transferase arginine can be methylated once or twice but while lysine can be methylated up to 3 times it has this methylation have many significant roles example provide protein stability and protection against enzymatic degradation significant effects on protein protein interactions protein localization etc plays regulatory role in gene transcription signal transduction and methylation of histones has been shown induce gene activation depending on the amino acid residues that is methylated phosphorylation this is a reversible addition of phosphoryl or phosphate group usually to the threonine and tyrosine or serine residues of the polypeptide chains this is the commonest and one of the most important post translation modification process in an animal cells phosphorylations and the dephosphorylations can switch on or switch off many enzymes it is catalyzed by the enzyme kinases and dephosphorylation is catalyzed by the enzyme phosphatase the phosphorylation can transform an uncharged protein to a negatively charged and hydrophilic protein inducing conformational changes in it and this reaction regulates the biological functions of most proteins and significant role in transduction cell growth cell cycle and apoptosis which is programmed cell death next one is sulfation sulfation is a addition of sulfate group usually to the thiosine residues of polypeptide chain it is accomplished by the tyrosyl protein sulfotransferases tpsts which are membrane bound enzymes trans golgi bodies the universal donor of phosphate group 4 sulfation is 3 phosphodinosyl 5 phosphosulfate it is this process is important in the synthesis of fibrinogen and secretory proteins acetylation is also addition of acetyl group to the n terminal of peptide chain and this catalyzed by the enzyme acetylase or acetyl transferase the acetyl group donor for this reaction is acetyl coenzyme a this acetylation is significant in protein stability acetylation and deacetylation of histone is very important in gene regulation acetylation of histones reduces the positive charge this in turn reduces its inter actions with the negatively charged phosphate group of dna and thereby makes it less tightly bound to the dna thus dna is readily accessible to gene transcription similarly hydroxylation is the addition of hydroxyl oh group to certain amino acids of protein it is catalyzed by hydroxylase the amino acids that are usually hydroxylated that include proline lysine asparagine histidine etc it is important in the conversion of hydrophobic or lipophilic compounds to hydrophobic compounds also role in regulation of protein stability and regulation of the kinase activity of some modified proteins as from others lipidation is a covalent binding of lipid group to a protein Lipidation is accomplished by the different processes such as prenylation, N-myristoylation, palmitoylation, and glycosyl phosphatidylase. Sorry, glycosyl phosphatidylase 
nositol that is gpi anger addition each process see detail first one is prenylation it is addition of isoprenoid moiety to a cysteine residue of substrate proteins it is critical in controlling and localization activity of several proteins that have crucial function in the biological regulation and myristolation is the addition of myristol group to the glycine residue by an amide bond it is significant in membrane association and apoptosis palmitolization is the palmitoyl group is added to the cysteine residue of protein in gpi anchor addition the carboxyl terminal signal peptide of the protein is split away and replaced by the gpi anchor recent studies in human genetics have revealed that gpi anchors are important for human health in a defect in assembling and attachment or remodeling of the gpi anchor may be lead to genetic diseases known as inherited gpi deficiency as from ni- lipidation nitrosylation is a comp- covalent incorporation of nitrosyl moiety of no into another molecule it is a physiologically important post translational modification that affects a wide variety of proteins that are involved in a number of cellular process nitrosylation taking place at the thiol group of cysteine so it is termed as s nitrosylation so other hand on the other hand the nitrosylation taking place at a transition metal example the catalytic site of metalloenzymes it is so it is also termed as metal nitrosylation the n nitrosylation is a ubiquitous regulatory mechanism for a protein conformational change protein protein interactions and further post translational modifications such as phosphorylation acetylation ubiquitination and disulfide bond formation then is ubiquitination ubiquitination is the addition of ubiquitin to the lysine residues of substrate protein ubiquitin is a small protein and the ubiquitination regulates a protein's functions or marks it degradation either a single ubiquitin molecule that is known as mono ubiquitination or a chain of several ubiquitin molecules that is poly ubiquitination may be attached to the proteins the poly ubiquitinated proteins are recognized by the 26s proteasomes and are subsequently targeted for the proteolysis or degradation the mono ubiquitinated proteins may be influence cell tracking and endocytosis this process serve as several functions the commonest one is the flag protein for degradation by proteasomes other functions include immune response inflammatory response organelle biogenesis and signal roles in dna repair next sumoylation sumoylation is a binding of sumo that is s u e m o small ubiquitin related modifier its protein which target proteins in the same way as ubiquitin bind with the target protein it is reversible ptpm in which small ubiquitin like modifier proteins are covalently attached to the lysine residues of target proteins and it confers transcription regulation activity on the target proteins and help in transportation of target protein from the cytosol to nucleus the last one is ampelation and de amidation ampelation is a reversible addition of amp to a protein it involve the formation of a phosphodiester bond between the hydroxyl group of proteins and phosphate groups of amp and de amidation is the removal or conversion of asparagine or glutamine residue to another functional groups asparagine is converted to aspartic acid or isoaspartic acid while glutamine is converted to glutamic acid or pyroglutamic acid this modifications can change the structure and stability and the functions of proteins so we see the major events and process that happening in the post translation protein modifications and then after all 
we can see the major functions or significance of this protein modification this modification has a significant role in generating the structural heterogeneity and the functional diversity of protein and it bring about the conversion of one type of protein to different functional type in different cell types aid in proper protein folding some lectin molecules called calnexin bind to the glycosylated protein and it assist in its folding protective protein against the proteolytic cleavage by blocking the cleavaging site and it bring about protein sorting or protein translocation regulate the protein activity and protein functions and play important role in the translocation of secretory proteins and export the proteins across the biological membrane some of the proteins are destined to ag- to get incorporated with the plasma membrane and the membrane of lysosomes mitochondria chloroplast etc etc and finally the ptpm significantly increases the diversity and complexity of proteomes there is a picture that is expressing the process happening in the post translation modifications so this is all about the post translation modifications of proteins thank you